Hi, students. We are here today with a pronunciation lesson about a very common difficulty that many of the students in my classroom have had during my time teaching adult English. And what we are going to talk about and practice with today is the pronunciation of the T and the different ways that most speakers of American English will change the T for the pronunciation. Now, do I expect, do I hope that you will memorize, put these into your mind? Not at all. The idea in this practice with this explanation is to give you a feeling that you understand what is happening and you understand that there are many different ways most speakers of American English will pronounce the T in a word. So let's jump right into it. One of the comments that I hear the most when talking about the letter T and pronunciation of T with students is the idea that um, Americans are swallowing swallow. Americans are swallowing their, their letters. And this is a little bit um, true. So I want to start off by reading you a small paragraph. In this paragraph, we have a lot of different pronunciations for the letter T. After you listen to me the first time, we are going to take apart the paragraph sentence by sentence, listening to the different pronunciations of T that exist in this paragraph. I was talking with my friend a little while ago. She wants to travel to a certain body of water in a different nation. I told her to take advantage of her young age, she's only 20, and try to travel a little and see the mountain. Now, this paragraph, these sentences feel very easy. Um, we, we understand we understand all of the words, but the pronunciation of the T is really, really crazy inside of these sentences. So let me read one more time. We actually have six different pronunciations of T in this short paragraph. There are six different pronunciations of T. As I read again, I want you to listen for the pronunciations. Try to notice maybe two or three of the different pronunciations. I was talking with my friend a little while ago. She wants to travel to a certain body of water in a different nation. I told her to take advantage of her young age. She's only 20 and try to travel a little and see the mountain. Really, there are six different pronunciations of T in this short paragraph, and I can't see your faces through YouTube, but I imagine you, you have something like this, this face that says, teacher, I hate this lesson. Why are we talking about this? This is too difficult. Um, but what I want to do is take them apart and make it less difficult so you can recognize that the different pronunciations exist because the first step in producing a new pronunciation is to be able to hear the pronunciation and recognize it. So the first pronunciation of T that we hear in this paragraph is just T sounds like T. And this is the happiest when we can just hear that strong t pronunciation. For example, I was talking, talking. You hear that t. The tongue is up behind the front of your top teeth and the puff of air, the t of air is leaving your mouth. I was talking. I told her, I told her to take, take, told. She's only 20, tw, tw, 
20, you hear that strong t, like a regular t. We see this in the words like talk, test, the end of a word like act, the middle of a word like 13, t, you hear a strong t, 14, 15, 16. She was caught. I taught her. I taught her. And I wanted you to hear this at the beginning of some words, in the middle of some words, and at the end of some words. The piece that always gives my students the biggest difficulty are the times that T sounds like D. And what is happening is that your tongue is making the shape of the T, but the air is not coming out. So the T and the D, the T and the D, are the same exact tongue position in your mouth. And you can feel that by making a word like talk, talk, the tongue is up, touching behind these teeth, and the air is coming out. Talk, and then change to a simple D word like dog. Talk, dog. The tongue is in the exact same position, which is why when the T t, doesn't have that poof of air, the sound is like D. For example, a little, a little while ago, a little, a body of water, a body of water, 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 little, little. This usually happens between a vowel, T, R, like the word water, we have the A vowel, we have the T and the R, the word better, better, butter, butter. We also see this happen between a vowel, T, L, like the word little, you have the I vowel, the T, and the L. Little, a bottle, bottle. We hear this in gotta, I gotta go. Water, little, better, butter. We also hear this at the end of a lot of the numbers. 30, 40. Because of that R and the Y vowel sound at the end. 13, you hear a strong T. 13. 30, you hear a D. 14. 40. 15. 50. And even in a word like fertilize, food, fertilizer. Sometimes that T is completely gone, swallowed. And in linguistics, in the study of language, this is called a glottal stop. Do you memorize this? Absolutely not. Um, but this is where, again, the mouth is making the T, but nothing is coming out. For example, certain. Certain. Now you are beautiful to say certain. A certain body. Most American English speakers will say certain. My tongue is going up to make the T, but nothing is happening. If you think about a phrase like uh-oh, uh, uh-oh, this is the same type of certain, certain, uh-oh. 
nuh-uh, certain, the same type of uh, start stop in the middle. And in language, this is called glottal stop. The mountain, mountain, you are perfect. Your American English speaking coworker is going to say mountain, mountain. Mitten, kitten, mountain, certain, fitness, lightning, lightning, partner. And even a very common word like what? What? That T is, is kept in. Nothing is coming out. Um, what did you say? What? What's happening? What's happening? In some phrases like, I need to get some, get some. What time did you get up? Get up. What time did you get up? Come on, get in, get, get in. Let her go, let, let her go. That T is truly, this is where we hear and we feel like the T is swallowed. <sighs> How's your brain feeling? We're almost done with the hardest ones. Numbers two, three, and four. These are the hard pieces. One, T sounds like T. Ah, easy. Five and six, when we come to five and six, easy. Stick with me for a little bit longer. I know you can do it. Then there are words where the T is just completely gone. I am not forming it at all in my mouth. The T is deleted from the word. For example, she wants to, she wants, she wants. There's no T at all. The only thing you hear is the N and the S. She wants. Different. Different. A different way of life. A different culture. Different. Take advantage. 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 Take advantage. Now, when does this happen? Um, often it happens when T is at the end of a word, especially when there is a consonant plus T. Now, all of these examples have N plus T, um, but we could see this in a different combination as well. Shouldn't, can't, won't, isn't, different. She shouldn't go. She can't go. She won't go. She isn't going. A different home. We also see this when T happens between two consonants. For example, that word want. It's really hard even for speakers of English who are born in an English-speaking country, it's hard to make n t s all together at the same time. She wants. So that T is gone. She wants. Ooh, to take one test, to take two tests. That T is gone because it's hard to say s t s. It's impossible. Tests. Tests. Act. You hear a strong T. Act. Acts. The T is gone. Print. Please print your name. She prints. She prints her name. Other words like gentle. She's a very gentle girl. A gentleman. The word 20, we talked about with number one, the strong T for 20. But the second T, I don't say 20. I say 20. 20 years old. The 
the last two pieces, number five and number six, that we will talk about are very clear in when they happen, which words they happen with. For example, number five, we are talking about when T and R combine to make the sound of tr. And this is a regional piece of English. However, I do hear it in most American dialects. I hear it across most of the United States. However, some English teachers would argue with me and say that TR doesn't make this sound. Um, I do think it is common in American English. For example, the word travel. Travel. You don't hear me push a strong t. Travel. You hear that pulled in and it sounds like ch 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 travel try to travel travel try trip true tree trouble and truck here all of these are at the beginning of the word extra chemistry electricity distribute these are in the in the middle or towards the end of the word. And then we have this very last word, which in a strong pronunciation will be inter, inter, interesting. But in my relaxed, lazy American pronunciation, in my reduced American pronunciation, the sound of this word is interest, interest, interesting interesting. This is only when you have T and R together that you hear this sound of CH. The last one, number six, again, this is only when you see the T-I-O-N that the T is pronounced with the SH. So we hear SHUN. Nation, option, information, vacation, donation, any word where you are seeing T-I-O-N, you are going to hear that pronounced as shun with that S-H sound. So if we come back even to just the very beginning of our paragraph, um, the first few sentences, I want to highlight each part where I am using one of these different six pronunciations. And then I want to put them all together again and have you try to listen for a few of the different pronunciations that we talked about in this lesson. I was talking with my friend. I was talking with my friend. We hear that strong T. I was talking with my friend a little while ago. A little while ago. You hear that T sounding like D. She wants, she wants, she wants. That T is completely gone. She wants to travel. You hear that T-R sounding C-H. She wants to travel to a certain body of water. Certain, certain. You hear that T swallowed. That N, certain, uh, like the uh-oh certain in a different nation you hear that shun sound these two sentences we have all six of these different pronunciations for t i was talking with my friend a little while ago she wants to travel to a certain body of water in a different nation i told her to take advantage of her young age she's only 20 and try to travel a little and see the mountain. <sighs> How are you feeling, students? How's your brain? I know 100% that this is an extremely difficult part of English pronunciation. I don't expect you to memorize these six pieces of pronunciation, but what I want you to keep in your mind is that T has a lot of different pronunciations. 
the easiest to memorize can be that TR or the T-I-O-N. T as a strong T. Those three are easy. A lot more difficult for us for our tongues is that T sounding like D as in little, better, butter. T sounding like swallowed, halfway missing, as in mountain, mount, mountain, kitten, mitten. And then the T completely gone, like in the word 20, 20, 20. Advantage, advantage. Gentlemen, gentlemen. I can't go. I can't. I can't go. The most important thing always is to practice, practice, practice. Listen for these different pronunciations on TV. Listen for them from your coworker and try to hear them in people's pronunciations. Until next time, students. Bye.